Hi class, welcome to part two of the lesson on eukaryotic gene regulation. So in part one, I introduced you to why gene regulation is important in eukaryotes. How in multicellular organisms, the variety of cells that we see are largely the result of specific genes being turned on and other genes being turned off. We initially focused on control over chromatin modification, but in part two, we will focus on this second level, transcriptional control. So the question before us is, once chromatin is loosely packaged as euchromatin shown here, and once a particular gene, such as this segment here, is found between nucleosomes and accessible for transcription, what kind of cellular machinery is needed to actually activate the transcription of this gene? So first, we need to review eukaryotic gene structure. Now this diagram is a little more complicated than I would ideally like because it shows the process from DNA to RNA to protein, and I just want to focus on the gene structure. So this part of the DNA from where I'm drawing here up to here, that is the gene. So this is our gene. This entire region gets then transcribed into RNA. So you can see the equivalent of the DNA segment here in the RNA. In yellow are the regulatory regions. Now, for prokaryotes, you learned that they organize their genes into operons, where a single promoter controls multiple related genes. That is not the case for eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, there's one promoter per gene. The promoter is where the RNA polymerase will bind to transcribe this gene. The promoter also has regions where regulatory proteins called transcription factors will bind. And then something that prokaryotes don't have is eukaryotes have these additional enhancer regions. So we'll, in this lesson, we'll focus more on the enhancer as a region where regulatory proteins bind. So let's make sure you know the definition of transcription factors. So transcription factors are proteins which regulate transcription. Some act as activators and turn on transcriptions. Others are repressors and prevent transcription. In eukaryotes, there are two categories of transcription factors, so-called general transcription factors, and these are the same for every gene. They are necessary to recruit RNA polymerase to the promoter. And then there are specific transcription factors. These are specific to a particular gene, and some are activators and others are repressors. This picture shows how the general transcription factors bind to the promoter. So transcription factors recognize very specific DNA sequences. So they look for certain letters in the DNA and bind there. Many eukaryotic promoters, though not all, have what's called the TADA box in their promoter. The it's called the TADA box because the nucleotides TATA -T -A are found there. So in this picture, you can first see these two general transcription factors binding to the TADA box. Then they recruit additional transcription factors binding there. And then this entire complex now recruits RNA polymerase. And this is now referred to as the transcription initiation complex. Once all of these proteins have assembled here, RNA polymerase is ready to begin transcription, but it can't do so until the specific transcription factors bind. Before I show you how the specific transcription factors bind, let's look again at the structure of a eukaryotic gene. So the general transcription factors bind here at this region of the promoter, right at the beginning of the gene. But the specific transcription factors often bind at enhancers that can be pretty far from the beginning of the gene. 
This is not drawn to scale. This region of DNA can be fairly long. So if the specific transcription factors are binding pretty far from RNA polymerase, how do they then activate RNA polymerase? Well, the DNA will form an interesting loop like this, where the enhancer will now be in this location and the proteins will be able to interact within this loop. So this picture now shows you how the DNA loops so that the specific transcription factors can come in contact with the general transcription factors in RNA polymerase. So here in green is the gene, in front of it is the promoter, and then right here, some of these ovals are the general transcription factors. So they bind to the promoter and then recruit RNA polymerase. Now over here is the enhancer. And these little three little squares are the specific transcription factors that bind to the enhancer. So as they bind, the DNA forms this loop to bring them in contact with the general transcription factors in RNA polymerase. And there are some proteins that are referred to as mediator proteins that help uh, mediate, they help form that contact between the specific transcription factors and RNA polymerase and the general transcription factors. So only once this entire complex has been assembled, if these specific transcription factors are activators, they will signal RNA polymerase to now begin moving along the gene and begin transcription. And now I want to again remind you of what you learn about prokaryotic gene regulation. So for prokaryotes, you learn that they organize their genes into operons, where one promoter controls the transcription of multiple related genes. And that makes their gene regulation efficient. In eukaryotes, each gene has its own promoter. However, one way in which eukaryotic gene regulation is efficient is that different genes can have the same kind of promoter, as in the same DNA sequence within the promoter. This diagram shows gene A versus gene B, which have the same promoter, as is indicated by using the same color to show the promoter. But if you compare their enhancers, you can see different colors shown in the enhancer region of gene B versus the enhancer region of gene A. So they have different sequences within their enhancers, and so different specific transcription factors activate the transcription of gene A versus gene B. So having the same promoter for different genes helps with efficiency, but having different enhancers to which different specific transcription factors bind gives eukaryotic cells a lot of variation in how they can regulate different genes. And then next, I want to bring back something you learned about even earlier in the school year. Do you remember cell signaling? So in cell signaling, you learned that as some kind of signaling molecule called a ligand, this could, for example, be a hormone molecule, binds to a receptor protein. That receptor then activates a signal transduction pathway. And then that signal transduction pathway leads to some type of cellular response. And you learned that one type of cellular response is the activation of a transcription factor. So in this example, the signaling molecule is a growth factor called TGF-beta, which binds to its receptor. The receptor then activates a signal transduction pathway that then leads to the phosphorylation and activation of a set of transcription factors. This transcription factor complex enters the nucleus and then activates the transcription of various genes whose gene products then cause apoptosis. And this is just one example, but many of your cell signaling pathways actually work by activating transcription factors, which then regulate gene expression.
Now, how often a particular gene is transcribed depends on the gene. To discuss this concept further, I'm going to ask you some questions. Write the answers down and we will talk about them in class. So the first question is, what type of gene needs to be transcribed in all tissues? The next question is, what type of gene is transcribed only in some cells? And then this next one is, what type of gene is transcribed only at specific times? So think about these, but I have one more question. I also want to ask you about the effect of mutations on regulatory regions. So the question here is related to this concept. So the transcription, transcription factors bind to specific sequences in the DNA. So here this picture shows in pink a transcription factor binding to a particular set of nucleotides in the DNA. What would be the effect of a mutation in a promoter or an enhancer sequence. So we're almost at the end of this lesson. So for our final point, I want to remind you of a diagram that I showed you at the beginning. I showed you a picture of a single fertilized egg undergoing mitosis to eventually produce that adorable baby. And I said during that embryo development, all the different cell types had to develop. So there was a lot of cell differentiation into specific types of cells and tissues. This cell differentiation involves sequential activation of gene transcription. So what do we mean by the sequential activation? Well, this diagram shows the current model of how human pancreas develop during our embryo development. So your pancreas consists of a few different cell types. So sequential activation often involves an initial production of a master regulatory transcription factor. This master regulator then activates other transcription factors. And those other transcription factors then activate genes that are specific for different tissue types. So genes that will be involved in the actual differentiation. So it's kind of like a cascade of one transcription factor activating the transcription of another transcription factor, which then activates the transcription of tissue specific genes. And I wanna leave you with one last question. When you look at this model, what do you think this arrow represents the one that's kind of circular. So think about it, write it down, and we'll discuss it in class. So finally, I'd like to summarize what you have so far learned about eukaryotic gene regulation in both the part one lesson and the part two lesson. So in part one, I discussed the role of chromatin modification. So the chemical modifications of DNA and histones that can regulate gene expression. I then introduced you briefly to the field of epigenetics, which is the inheritance of these chromatin modifications. And then in part two, I first discussed eukaryotic gene structure and the importance of regulatory regions. So remember how important promoters and enhancers are. Then the role of general transcription factors and specific transcription factors in regulating gene transcription. And then I briefly touched on the relationship between cell signaling and gene expression, that there are various signaling molecules that lead to the activation or repression of specific genes. And finally, remember that gene regulation is crucial in cell differentiation during the development of a multicellular organism. And that during this development, there is sequential gene expression. So one transcription factor activating another transcription factor, which can then activate other genes and so on. So to come back to this diagram, so far we have discussed these first two levels of gene regulation chromatin, and then transcriptional control. And in future lessons, you will learn about these additional levels of gene regulation.